Hi everyone, my name is Eric and I'm an engineer with the Linux graphics team at NVIDIA. For the past couple of years, my focus has been on improving Wayland and support in the NVIDIA driver, and to that end, I've also had the opportunity to contribute to several upstream projects like x Wayland, Wayland Compositor, and Wayland Compositors, and some client applications. The subject of my talk today will be explicit synchronization for Linux display servers. I know that Vass will have described the difference between explicit and implicit synchronization in the, and some lower level details in the talk before mine, but to start, I'd like to give an overview of some of the synchronization problems that are specific to display servers. In the typical case, client applications, games, video players, 3D modeling programs will kick off work on the GPU to render a frame to a video memory buffer, and then send a request to, to the display server to have that buffer presented to the user. That would be a WL service commit on Wayland or present pix map on X11, for example. The display server can then either pass this bu buffer directly to the output. In the case of a Wayland compositor, that might be a KMS driver controlling physical display hardware. Or in the case of something, something like X Wayland, it would be a Wayland compositor. Or it will read, read from the buffer, maybe do some rendering of its own to draw things like window title bars and other desktop elements, and then composite that together with buffers provided by other clients into the final desktop image. In either case, though, to avoid corruption, we need to ensure that the client's rendering is finished before the buff buffer is actually made visible. Furthermore, when the server is finished reading from the buffer in the composition case, or it has been released by the output in the direct scanout case, we need a way to signal to the client that it's free to render a new frame into the buffer. There are other factors that can make the situation even more complicated. For instance, the system may have multiple GPUs, each driving their own displays and so different portions of the desktop will be displayed on each one. Or the client application may be running on a different GPU than the server, as is often the case on hybrid graphics laptops. In these situations, we not only need to worry about... We not only need to ensure operations on a single device are properly synchronized, but also ensure synchronization across devices. Or the user may be running a screen recording program like I am right now, or maybe a remote desktop server, and so, buffers may also need to be passed to a video encoding library, again, ensuring proper synchronization with rendering operations. So, how do we solve these problems right now? Well, at least with upstream drivers, access to video memory buffers is automatically synchronized at the kernel level. If one process, the client application in this case, submits some rendering to a buffer, an implicit fence will be attached, which will only be signaled when the rendering completes. If another process, the display server, tries to read from the buffer, the DRM driver will wait for the implicit fence to be signaled before executing the read. Or, as another example, if the display server renders the desktop on one GPU, and then copies a portion of it to another GPU to display on a different monitor, the copy will automatically wait for the rendering to finish. One big advantage of this approach is that it simplifies things significantly on the user space side. For the most part, the display server doesn't need to worry about synchronizing GPU operations. However, it also has some drawbacks. For one, it can lead to unnecessary synchronization. Suppose multiple clients submit buffers for presentation, and the server reads from each one to composite them together into the final desktop image. With implicit synchronization, it will be forced to wait for all of those clients rendering to complete each frame meaning that the frame rate of the entire desktop will be effectively limited, limited to the frame rate of the slowest rendering client. Additionally, synchronization can only happen at a per-buffer granularity. Reads and writes to the same buffer will always be serialized, even if they access non-overlapping regions of the buffer. It's impossible to, say, render an image to one part of, a, part of a buffer, and allow that to be read concurrently while you render a different image to another part of the buffer. More generally, Tracking all buffer accesses in the kernel can itself impose a potentially significant performance cost. Currently in the NVIDIA driver, and I believe upstream drivers are also moving in this direction to some extent, GPU commands are submitted directly from user space, without needing to incur the overhead of calling into the kernel at all. But this model is effectively incompatible with implicit sync. Finally, it limits the, limits the flexibility of afforded to client-side presentation APIs.
For instance, it's impossible to have a presentation request wait for work which has not yet been submitted to the GPU, or to signal a, an implicit fence directly from the CPU, both of which are required to properly support Vulkan's WSI. So, given these inherent limitations of implicit sync, I argue that the best path forward for display servers on Linux is to try to move towards a more explicit synchronization model, where instead of simply relying on the DRM driver, GPU synchronization, both across processes and within each process, is managed in user space. So, how can we do this? Well, the fundamental missing pieces are some sort of cross-process, user space visible GPU synchronization primitive, which can be shared between client applications and the display server and the accompanying protocols to interface with it. The current implicit sync model is based on the DMA fence object, which represents a single synchronization point, such as when a particular batch of GPU work is finished or when a buffer is released by a KMS driver. While these are exportable to user, user space as sync files, and so could be an option to base explicit sync on, by their nature they're somewhat limited in what they're able to express by themselves and also may pose undesirable restrictions on the backing implementation. Therefore, a higher level construct may be a better candidate, and we do already have such a thing in the form of DRM synchronization objects. These were originally introduced to support Vulkan timeline semaphores, and thus they have almost identical semantics to those. Instead of representing a single, single, single synchronization point like a DMA fence does, they can represent a timeline of multiple ordered synchronization points, each associated with a 64-bit integer value. This allows for a greater, de a greater degree of flexibility in how they can be used. With a DRM sync object, it's possible to wait for a given timeline point, even if the GPU work which would signal it has not yet been submitted. It's also possible to explicitly signal a timeline point from the CPU. So right away, this gets around two of the limitations of implicit sync that I mentioned earlier. Like DMA fences, sync objects can be exported to a file descriptor and shared across processes. Additionally, individual timeline points can themselves be exported as sync files or imported from sync files, allowing them to be incorporated into a poll-based event loop, which is particularly important for display server implementations, and facilitates interoperability with rendering APIs like EGL via the native fence sync, native fence sync extension and Vulkan via the external semaphore FD extension. And while sync objects are currently implemented on top of DMA fences, essentially as a wrapper around one or more of them, with each one representing a timeline point, they are also conceptually compatible with other implementations. For instance, one can imagine implementing them directly on top of a memory-backed counter, which may be more in line with the user memory fences upstream is moving towards. Right now in NVIDIA, we're actually working on adding support for DMA fences in our driver on top of a mechanism some, somewhat like that. Basically, to signal a DMA fence from the GPU, we'll submit a command to write to, the, write to this in-memory counter and then trigger an interrupt whose handler will check the value and, if needed, signal the DMA fence. And of course, this will also allow us to support DRM sync objects with their current implement implementation. So with DRM sync objects as the base primitive, all that remains is adding support to existing display server protocols like X11 and Wayland. I'll talk a little bit later about some of the current proposals for both of these. So, while we may have a path towards explicit synchronization, there are still some challenges that will need to be overcome. Firstly, it's always been the case that the Linux desktop exists as a collection of separate, separate projects which all come together to, cre to create a working system. This is as true of the graphics stack as anything else. We have client-side drivers, x Wayland, various Wayland compositors, KMS drivers, and so on, all developed by different teams with their own schedules. Thus, changes can't be expected to happen all at once. If the ecosystem does move towards an, ex an explicit sync model, it will happen over time in a piecemeal fashion. And so as individual components switch over, they'll need to remain compatible with other components which may still rely on implicit sync. Fortunately, the recently merged patches from JSON Xtrand offer an elegant solution to this. Briefly, they allow extracting a buffer's implicit fence as a sync file 
or importing a sync file into its implicit fence. So, for example, a Wayland compositor that uses explicit sync internally can still ensure proper synchronization with, say, a video encoding library to support screen recording, even if that library is still based on implicit sync. Another issue is safety. Ideally, a client application shouldn't be able to cause the server to hang if it never singles, signals a synchronization point. With DMA fences, we rely on DRM drivers to ensure that the fence completes in a reasonable time, if necessary using some sort of hardware-specific GPU hang recovery mechanisms. DRM sync objects also enforce their own timeout when waiting for unsubmitted timeline, po timeline points. One problem that remains to be solved is how to fit the wait for submit and signal from CPU capabilities of DRM sync objects into a poll like interface like we can do with sync files. Currently, these only support a blocking wait operation, but that isn't great for display, ser display server implementations because we don't want to stall the entire server waiting for one client's timeline point to be signaled. It may, be po it may be possible to handle this entirely in user space using something like a background thread, but that introduces a lot of complexity, and so ideally we may want to extend the kernel provided inter interface somehow. Finally, most display servers currently use OpenGL to interface with the GPU. And while extensions like EGL's native fence sync do provide explicit sync capabilities, Overall, the API is still fundamentally oriented around ex implicit sync, unlike Vulkan, so, unlike Vulkan, for instance. So if we want to avoid having to still pay the price of implicit sync after moving to an explicit model, we may want to specify to the OpenGL implementation that explicit sync isn't necessary for certain buffers. Looking at all of these challenges, though, none of them seem fundamentally intractable. And indeed, in some cases, workable solutions already exist. Hopefully by this point, I've made a reasonable argument for why moving towards an explicit sync model is something we should pursue on the display server side. To conclude, I'd like to go over some of the work already being done to this end. For my own part, I've tried to make progress on the X11 side by proposing additions to the Dry3 and Present extensions, adding support for explicit sync based on DRM sync objects along with an implementation for X Wayland. Because realistically, even though the Linux desktop is transitioning to Wayland, X11 applications aren't going away anytime soon, and so X Wayland will likely remain an important part of the graphics stack for the foreseeable future. These protocol additions introduce sync objects as a new protocol type, importable from a file descriptor, and allow specifying acquire and release timeline points on a given sync object for a present PIX map request. To avoid having to stall either the CPU or the GPU on the server side, we're able to export a sync file for the acquire point, add that to the server's event loop, and thus defer execution of the request until the timeline point is signaled. Then, after the PixMap has become idle on the GPU, it'll signal the release point. And while I've only added such support to the present PixMap request for now, having the basic sync object primitive in place could allow for other use cases, for instance, the damage add request could be augmented in a similar way to allow for GPU-synchronized damage reporting. On the Wayland side, while we've, act while we've actually had an explicit sync protocol in for some time based directly on DMA fences, this hasn't been widely implemented by compositors. And as mentioned above, DM <coughs> DMA fences alone are a bit restrictive in what we're able to do with them. Thus, Simon Suarez proposed a version 2 of this protocol based on DRM sync objects instead, and has also shared a work in progress reference implementation for WL roots. <clears throat> Indeed, I tried to mirror the design of this protocol in my own proposal for X11, hoping that this will both make it fairly straightforward to add support for the new Wayland protocol in X Wayland, and simplify things for client side drivers, since X11 and Wayland would be using similar mechanisms for synchronization. Also, <clears throat> also, Michelle Danzer has shared a patch for GNOME's Mutter Compositor to have it explicitly pull the implicit fence 
of client provided buffers before compositing from them, which solves the issue which solves the issue I mentioned earlier where the server's frame rate can be limited by a slow rendering client. So in that case we can see that some of the benefits of explicit sync can be realized even with only part of the stack using that model. And finally, although perhaps a less general application, Christini, which is used to run Linux, Linux applications in a virtual machine on Chrome OS, also uses explicit sync when interfacing with the Whelan compositor on the host system. It operates by piping Whelan protocol between the host and the guest over, over a Vertio interface and relies on the DMA fence based version 1 Whelan explicit sync protocol, along with JSON's implicit fence import export dioctals that I mentioned earlier. And here I've just included a few links to some of the um, merge requests that I just mentioned. As a closing thought, the transition to explicit sync will almost certainly be a gradual process in display servers, client-side drivers, and any other GPU interfacing components. But I do believe it will eventually leave the Linux graphics ecosystem in a better place going forward. And while I've shared some of my own ideas on how we might get there, Ultimately, all of the parties involved will need to cooperate and agree on a solution that works, works for everyone. I'm con confident that this is achievable, though, and I'd just like to add that we at NVIDIA definitely would be interested in being part of the discussion. So thank you all for listening to my talk. Thank you to the XDC organizers for putting, on, putting together a great conference, and I'd be happy to answer any questions.